Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to introduce you to what we call the optical and the radio window. What do we mean by that? Well, our atmosphere is opaque to many of the radiations in the electromagnetic spectrum. Here we have what we call a representation of the spectrum. To the left here we have UV, X-ray, and gamma ray radiation. And luckily for us, the atmosphere is completely opaque to those three types of radiations. If it wasn't, we would be in a lot of trouble because that radiation brings in so much energy, life really wouldn't be possible if it made it through to the surface of the Earth. Imagine this to be space and this is the Earth. The radiation trying to make it through simply stops in the atmosphere and gets absorbed. Only a very small percentage of the UV radiation right here at this very edge actually makes it through to the, to the uh, ground and luckily for us it's just a very small amount. Here's what we call the visible window. The, um, the atmosphere is completely transparent to the visible light rays anywhere from 400 to 700 nanometers. So from 400 to 700 nanometers the atmosphere is completely transparent and radiation can go both ways no problem and so we have visible telescopes on the Earth that can see pretty well everything in space. The only problem we have is that the atmosphere is somewhat turbulent and when the seeing isn't very good and there's a lot of dust and turbulence in the atmosphere there's some hampering of the visibility and so we do have adaptive optics and we have image processing to clean that up and so earthbound telescopes are now pretty well as good as space telescopes because they have a much wider aperture. If we want to see UV, X-rays, and gamma rays, we have only one choice. That's to put the satellites up in space. And we do have satellites that can see UV, X-rays, and gamma rays in space. What about infrared? The next window here is infrared. And see that there are certain places where we can indeed see infrared radiation at very specific wavelengths. In other cases, it's almost completely blocked. And even though we can almost see all the way through it, there is still some blocking of infrared radiation coming from space for us to be able to see it clearly. Again, infrared radiation is typically seen at very high altitudes or up in space as well. So we do have infrared uh, telescopes that are in space and sometimes we have telescopes and balloons to get up high enough so that we can see it um, above a large portion of the atmosphere and from very high mountain tops we can do a pretty good job in some wavelengths as well. Again, it's very dependent. A lot of this blocking is due to water vapor in the atmosphere. The higher you go, the less water vapor, the better you can see. But you can see that it does appear in a lot of different wavelengths. So, so infrared radiation, uh, it's kind of a hit and a miss. And in a lot of cases, to do a good job, you need to be either very high up or, or in space. Then we get into the range of microwaves. And you can see that some of the longer microwaves, we can indeed see to some extent, but not very well. They do get blocked. Uh, at large distances through the atmosphere and there's some areas here where very little of the of the uh, microwave radiation gets through so let's go with that so we definitely microwave radiation for large part would have to be seen from up in space and finally we get to the radio radiation again we have a nice beautiful open window where we can receive and see a lot of radio radiation so we call that the radio window in particular the 21 centimeter uh, wave is a very important one to us. Uh, that is caused by the spin flip of the electrons in hydrogen, in neutral hydrogen. So when the electron, uh, all electrons have a spin, and when they flip their spin, and of course it's a little bit more complicated than just sing, imagining something flipping, but they do have a quantum mechanic state that they can be in, and when it flips from the one state to the other, it emits a photon of 21 centimeters, and we can clearly see that and also that 21 centimeter spin flip radiation also makes it through the dust and gas from, from nebulas and we can see through nebula that otherwise would block all the other radiation, invisible and infrared radiation. So this is a very particular important one and of course we'll see a lot of radio radiation in all the various uh, bands anywhere from starting between 1 and 10 centimeters on the left side to between 10 and 100 meters on the right side. Notice that this is a logarithmic scale. So we start at the very minute 0.1 nanometers. That's in the X-ray gamma ray radiation band. You can see how it gets bigger and bigger here till finally we get into the radio band. So astronomy, we'd like to observe, observe things in every wavelength. Predominantly visible and radio are the two wavelengths that we can see from the Earth. Infrared is kind of hidden mess depending upon what wavelength you're observing. Microwave, there's not a lot of open windows we can see anything through. And anything to the left of the high 
uh, energy in the high optical wavelength down into the UV and to the left of that definitely you need to be up in space because you're not going to see anything through the atmosphere. That's what we call the optical and radio window.